Our next guest is Missy Peters. Missy is a figurehead in the Victoria Arts community. She's a member of the Paper Street Theatre Company, performs and produces shows and festivals featuring poetry and improv on a regular basis. She recently returned from the Berlin Improv Festival with Dave Morris, the director of an improvised Tennessee Williams, which is what she's here to talk about tonight. So let's have a hand for Missy Peters. Thanks for coming. Oh, thanks for having me. You're welcome. What you're doing is really incredible. So as we heard, you're doing a production of an improvised Tennessee Williams, and straight off the bat, what does that mean? Yeah, well, this is the inaugural show for uh, the company Paper Street Theatre. Yes. And the Improvised Tennessee Williams uh, is June 29th and 30th at Intrepid Theatre. And what it is is um, it's a play inspired by Tennessee Williams' work. So um, we, went to, we went to the Berlin Improv Festival, as my bio said, and there we learned how to improvise in the style of Tennessee Williams. And what that means is we studied his plays, and then we sat down as a group of improv improvisers and said, what makes this Tennessee Williams? What is particular to this artist and to the way these plays are staged to make it feel like Tennessee? Things like um, the, 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 the relationships between families and um, Tennessee Williams actually wanted to be a poet, which is why I'm on board for this particular project. So I am cool. a poet. And so his language, even if he has very base or low characters, they have very uh, developed and expanded metaphorical language. And, and they, they speak about, about holding a glass as if their life is this empty glass. You know, it, It's just this rich, kind of. And, and so the challenge is to not only improvise that, but to improvise dramatically, a lot of work that people see is very um, comedy focused. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So it's on the 29th and the 30th. Yeah. And so what can the audience expect to see? Are you asking for suggestions? It's nothing like comedy. So they'll, they'll come in and how is the show gonna, gonna lay out? Yeah, so if people are familiar with, uh, let's say mainstream Im improv, um, they're used to short scenes, they're used to comedy, they're used to the audience having a lot of interaction. What we're going to do is actually, again, it's a play, so it's a long form improv. We will take a suggestion from the audience because that's how the audience knows that what they're seeing was made up on the spot because yeah. we're going to respond to you. So it's um, more theatrical? Absolutely. As you can see, when I say it tastes like Tennessee Williams, here is a possible costume, which it, it just looks or is suggestive of and flavors style. So yeah. are you using any props or anything like that? Well, so again, usually in uh, improv we'll use what they call theater boxes, like giant black boxes. Yep. Um, so we've tweaked that a little bit and we're going to be using old apple crates and, uh, and wooden chairs. And again, Just things basics. that have that feel, but we can turn them into a table or a chair or anything. So that sounds really it's cool. somewhere between improv and theater. So then tell me, because you said it kind of came from Berlin, so where did the concept for this work come from? And, and also, is this what you'll be doing with Paper Street Theatre Company in the future? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we should have Dave to answer that question. He's the um, director of tonight. Mm -hmm. um, where did the concept come from? We learned it from Randy Dixon, and that's actually where Dave is this week. He's down in Seattle uh, learning from the master. But uh, imp Improvised Tennessee Williams is just a style. It's It's... You could improvise anything. A lot of people around the world improvise uh, Shakespeare. Tennessee is another popular one. Yeah, improvising so an like iambic pentameter is impossible. <laughs> I've tried it. So oh. that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So we're going one step back. Tennessee's not that bad, although my southern drawl is terrible. Well, I'm sure it's improving. <laughs> so then you are rehearsing. Some, oh yeah, some, we've been some rehearsing. Doing some research for, and yeah. We've all, we've read about two or three plays each and we spent a good time reading them out loud to each other and now we're practicing through each of those, uh, what we would consider tastes or elements of the play. Uh, and yeah, we've been rehearsing for about a month and a half now. So then just to clarify, the content is going to change but the style and the tone is what stays the same? Absolutely, yeah. That sounds really interesting. Can we see something? Yeah, from yeah. It? However, again, like I said, we need a suggestion to start. So if you could give us a title of a play that Tennessee Williams might have written. And just to remind everyone, Tennessee was um, one of America's best known playwrights, mm -hmm. uh, very Southern Gothic. He wrote plays like A Streetcar Named Desire, The Glass Menagerie, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. So, can you think of a title like those titles? Let's think of like an emotional word. How about something like, 
mischief in masonry. All right. All right. Does that work? Yeah, let's okay. do it. Let's unmic you and then go for it. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. And who's, uh, who's joining you? Uh, yeah. Um, Scott Thompson? Scott Thompson is joining yeah. me. Perfect. Okay, go to it. Thank you. I forgot you still come here sometimes. I didn't know you ever came. Well, I came looking for you. A woman shouldn't be in a graveyard as much as you is. It's not. No, there's no other place for me to be. It ain't safe. And I like to keep my possessions where they belong at home now. You hurry up and make up your mind if you're done weeping over some shallow grave. Things need to be tended to at home. The leaves have fallen. The trees are bare. There's nothing. There's nothing on the trees anymore. And there's nothing for me at home. The trees only lose their leaves because it gets cold outside. When it gets cold, nothing survives. Whose fault? We can blame the seasons for it, but I think we can all think of a better reason why they fall off. Now, make up your mind what's it going to be. I dream of springtime. I dream of that. Petals and young buds. But all I ever get are dry leaves under my feet and cold, empty nights. And you know, maybe my heart is as cold as that stone over there. And maybe that's why I come here so much, because it's only Pa and this stone that could ever feel. It's how cold I feel sometimes. Maybe you spend too much time outside. It's warmer where we live. It used to be pretty hot. I feel so boxed in inside. I need to be outside sometimes. Why would you let me be outside? Just... I like you where I can see you. I like you where I can reach out and know that you're there. You're mine, you understand? If I'm as cold as this stone, then you're as hard. And you, you're never in my dreams. I'd rather sit here surrounded by the leaves and crumple and die than go back with you. Fine, I'll tell you what. You stay here with your cold, brave. I don't need to be in your dreams. But you ain't got no place to go now. You ain't allowed back in my place. My porch ain't for you anymore. And I'm through. I'm done chasing you around like a little girl. I married you 
for a reason. I believe you said yes for a reason, like a woman ought to. You enjoy the cold, 